All right, Sketchpad Podcast, we back. Make sure you like, share, subscribe to the page. Hit the thumbs up button if you like the content. So today we're actually going to be reviewing, reviewing Oliver Anthony's Richmond, North of Richmond song. So we'll be back. Thank y'all again for all the subscribers. Thank y'all again for everything that y'all have done for us. If you would like to donate to the cause, Cash App, PayPal is in the description. There's other ways you can donate, and that will be sharing the video with your family and friends. So, without further ado, let's get into Oliver Anthony's. Richmond, North of Richmond. We're going to break down some of the lyrics in the song and what was our favorite lyrics and why we gave it the score we gave it. So, you want to go first or you want me to go first? You go first. So, the first line that stood out to me is when he said, I've been selling my soul working all day overtime hours for bullshit pay so i've seen a couple of youtubers who actually got online and said that this song is you guessed it racist (laughs) oh boy the clown show that these people do to get people to click on their videos because they have to feed their base. So you have to feed your fans. But the reaching that they're doing is incredible. It's a talent. If you can reach that much, that has to be a talent. So what he's saying in his first line is not, it just doesn't apply to people in Richmond, Virginia. <laughs> this applies to everyone who's been working overtime for bullshit pay. Yeah. I don't get it. I don't get the this fascination with this obsession with trying to paint everyone in the light of racism. I just don't get it. I don't get it. Selling my soul for bullshit pay. Who does not go through that? Everybody goes through it. Even the people that disagree with the man. Well, I ain't going to say disagree. Even the people who maliciously said that he is a part of white supremacy or racism, (laughs) even they know that that's true. (laughs) How do you not, how do you, (sighs) go ahead, brother. Um, To piggyback off of uh, what you, um, what you just said or whatever, I think, I think uh, those first lines resonated with everybody as well and it also resonated with me you know what i'm saying what person what person don't you know that's working a nine to five and feel that way what person don't you know even the highest of position can get bullshit pay you understand? Like even the highest position can get bullshit pay. So I know it that for us that both hit hard when um when uh when he said that I'm been selling my soul, working all day, overtime hours for bullshit pay. How 
how is that even racist? Where, where, where in there does he say? <laughs> so you gotta anything? laugh at these guys. They were, they're, it's, where, they're hilarious. Where in there does it say anything about racism? Like, where you know does it say anything about race? It doesn't say anything, anything whatsoever. See, the problem is right. The system wants to push this agenda so far into people's skulls that they actually think that they're saying something that is actually competent. But you sound stupid because anybody with common sense will hear this song and say, no, it don't have nothing to do with racism. It just has something to do with the honest working class citizen who ain't getting what he's supposed to be getting out of life. Simple as that. So I don't know exactly where they're getting that from, but they need to stop it, man. They need to stop it, you know? So he says, next line that stood out to me was part of the, the pre-chorus. He said, it's a damn shame what the world's going through with people like me and people like you. Who was he talking about? He clearly stated in the lyrics with people like me and people like you. <laughs> so what what is he saying? People like me and people like you. He can't be talking about other white people <laughs> because he's obviously white when he says people like me. It's a damn shame what the world's going through with people like me and people like you. <laughs> he didn't say it's a damn shame what the world's going through with people like me. And they left it at that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So yeah. again, all this, they're trying to say that this song is he's promoting white victimhood. No, he's not promoting white victimhood. No. You got to be the dumbest person in the world to believe that this man is promoting white victimhood when he's talking about the lyrics in the song. I believe a lot of people just hate the fact that this song got so popular so fast from a guy who's talking about the struggles that poor people go through and just because he's white because i've seen a couple of youtubers say oh if he was black but he's not black nigga <laughs> all this if if this if that if this if that we're dealing with reality we're not dealing about what if this or what if that nigga if i played the lottery every day i might win <laughs> it could happen but the stupid, the, this is the stupid shit that, that you got to listen to from these people who claim they're smart. Mm -hmm. Oh, if, if he was black, then no one would care. What? There's plenty of songs that black people did that people cared. Plenty. I would say there's some black songs that people did that actually was bigger than this song. Michael Jackson did one of them. I'm talking about the man in the mirror. Mm -hmm. Hope we could bring a change. So when people say stuff again, not to say that Oliver Anthony is big as Michael Jackson, but it just goes to show you that when someone feels as though that they're going through something, they should be able to express themselves. You can't tell that man, even if he is, even if this is, let's just go with their argument. Even if it is, uh, 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 how would they say, um, white victimhood, even if that is the case, what are you saying that white people ain't victims of certain, of certain, uh, things that happen in America? Is that what you're saying? Because to me, if anybody's going through something, 
they should be able to sing about it. There's a lot of white people that's in poverty, just like there's a lot of black people that's in poverty. So what, the white people can't say nothing because they're white? <laughs> what? Oh, how does that make sense? So you're supposed to just not say nothing. But see, again, you're dealing with people who usually what they do is they just say, you know what? I'm just going to I'm just going to put this on him. He's promoting white victimhood. So since he's promoting white victimhood, whatever he says doesn't matter. So nothing in a song doesn't matter, even though if you go back and watch a couple of y'all videos, y'all totally agree with what he's saying, but y'all saying it. But because he's saying it, it's white victimhood. But if you say it, it's not white victimhood, right? Right. Okay. I get it. I get it. Mm -hmm. Hmm. So, uh, if we go into the, um, in the chorus, um, he says, living in the new world with an old soul. These rich men north of Richmond. Now, there's been a little bit of a controversy in the comments about the whole what he's talking about in that line. Well, and, actually, um, not to cut you off, it's the other line after that that's important too. What the uh, Lord knows, they all just want to have total control. That one. That line is that line is the reason why. But go ahead, I'm gonna let you finish. But that's the line right there. That's that line mm -hmm. that is the reason why they say what they said. But go ahead. All right, so if, all right, well, first of all, right, I know me and you talked about it off camera. Washington, isn't Washington north of Richmond? Isn't yeah. Washington north of Richmond? So, and, is, and, is, and isn't there other surrounding areas that are north of Richmond as well, besides yeah. Washington? So... He could be talking about anywhere. It doesn't necessarily have to be Washington. It could be talking about anywhere in that surrounding area. So I think um, I think some of the people are just missing the point. You know what I'm saying? And they're just like, I understand why I understand why they're trying to make the correction, but I mean like he could be talking about any of the surrounding locations. It doesn't necessarily have to be Washington, D.C. But to me, the line that stood out besides that was when he said, living in a new world with an old soul. To me, that meant I'm an older individual working trying to survive, trying to make ends meet, trying to take care of my family. But the world is constantly, constantly evolving into whatever. And me, I'm just trying to keep up. But because I'm not getting what I need to get to take care of my family, I'm basically just... You know what I'm saying? I'm basically just uh, trying to like keep up with everything. Like um, I'm like a few steps behind. I'm like right there, but I'm a few steps behind. That's what I get out of it, you know? And a lot of us are like that. You know what I'm saying? As the world constantly evolves, we either settle and where we at because we feel as if we can't do no better or we work two to three jobs trying to keep up with everything and before you know it we're old retired and getting social security and we still ain't making enough to survive so that's 
I mean, for me, that's what I took out of it when I um, when I heard the lyrics for that. Um. All right. So there's a couple of different things. Um, I understand exactly where they're coming from because I, I read that whole chorus and it makes sense. Um, geographically, they're basically saying if you if you read the whole chorus, it all goes together. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, uh, living in living in a new world with an old soul. These rich men, north of Richmond, Lord knows they just want to they want total control. They know they want to know what you think. They want to know what you do. You know what I'm saying? They they think they do. It says and they they don't think you know, but I know you do. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, the dollar ain't shit. And basically, I understand exactly when they say that he's talking about Washington, D.C. Because everything in that hook is surrounded by Washington, D.C. But when someone says, when, when someone says north of Richmond, uh, these, these, men, these rich men north of Richmond, I don't know if that's a saying in, 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 in Richmond, Virginia, the north Maybe because I heard somebody talking about the Mason Dixon line. I don't care about all that. We way past that. You know what I'm saying? We we talking about what's going on today. You know what I'm saying? Like if if you want to break that down, there's a lot of stuff that that rappers say that are totally racist and totally uh, uh weird. You know what I'm saying? So I don't want to hear it because he said something that you you want to try to connect something to. I don't want to hear that. But I understand where people are coming from when they say that because maybe that's a saying. The, the Richmond, North of Richmond, maybe they're saying that, okay, that's D.C. You know what I'm saying? That, it has to be a saying because too many people in the comments is saying it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, so it has yeah, to be a saying yeah. out there. It has to be. Um, we didn't, I'm putting it to it like this. We didn't know. You know what I'm saying? We didn't know that that was a saying. We don't know. You know what I'm saying? We didn't know that you guys say the Richmond, North of Richmond is D.C. When when we think in rich men who control it, the world in our head, we ain't just talking about DC. We also talking about Wall Street. We talking about uh, New York. We talking about mm-hmm. major the major cities in the north, mm-hmm. the Northmen. That's what we thinking. You know what I'm saying? We mm-hmm. wasn't thinking DC, but I understand where they coming from because basically they they talk everything surrounds. And they saying they want total control. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. So I get it. I get that part. Um That's one that was one of the lines that stood out to me. Um to me, there's so many lines in the song that stood out. I think this song is absolutely amazing. I think that this is a timeless song that's gonna be around forever. Because what he's talking about it affects people's livelihoods. You know what I'm saying? I really necessarily, I don't really necessarily care about the negative thoughts about the song because to me, if you're looking at this song in a negative light, when you know that this man is singing this song to uplift people, give people hope, and your first reaction is it's a negative song, there's something wrong with you. There has to be something wrong with you. And don't tell me, because I'm 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 fairly intelligent. Don't tell me, oh, I don't understand dog whistles and I don't understand racial undertones. Don't tell me no bullshit like that. Cause I know. I listen to the song, and this man is genuine in what he's saying. And people who are black, white, Asian, whoever, somebody, you let somebody from another country hear this song that understands English and they hear this song, they're going to probably burst into tears. I've seen black people burst into tears. So if you, again, just like I'm going to use their analogy against them, if he was black, nobody would care, right? So, okay, what if, let's just say what if, because everybody want to use the what if. So what if you didn't see his face and you heard the song? Then what? Would it be a, would it be an issue then? Because I see a lot of reaction videos where black people are watching this man and watching the song, and you know what they're doing? They're crying. So if so, everybody's stupid. 
Everybody? You think that this man made this song for white people? <laughs> I don't get it. I don't get the whole the whole attacking of the song because of what? Because he said a couple of lines that you that you want to try to twist and, and, and make it into a racial narrative. It's it's disgusting. It's disgusting. Why not celebrate the song for what it is? It's a it's a phenomenal song. But you want to say, oh, well, everybody, th this will really cracks me up about the hypocrisy when it comes to music, right? Everybody wants to point out songs like this and wants to point out all this stuff, but nobody wants to say anything about rap music when all they do is talk about taking drugs and killing people, bitches, cars, hoes, clothes. Nobody say shit. Nobody calls that out. I don't see Anthony Fantano. I don't see Amazing Lucas saying shit about uh, rappers who literally some drill rappers literally are on tape talking about killing people and he actually did it. I don't see nobody saying shit about that. But this man comes out with a song that's uplifting the people and you're going to sit here and tell me that there's some racial undertones in the song. <laughs> you got to be fucking kidding me. This is... It's hilarious. This shit is hilarious. It's hilarious. That's all I got to say, man. Honestly, uh, I don't know where, you know, maybe what is in their ears to really uh, say that there's racial undertones in the record because I did not detect that when I heard it myself. Um, I heard passion, I heard grief, I heard hunger, I heard desire to be better. I heard a bunch of things, but racial undertones is not one of them. Um, we gotta stop, we gotta stop plugging in race into everything because it's starting to get, it's starting to get annoying. It really is starting to get annoying. You know what I'm saying? The funny thing about it is when people are actually being racist in music, no one says nothing. No one says not a damn thing. When they really, when they're really plugging in and saying stuff they shouldn't be saying in their music, no one says nothing. But then when somebody's actually being genuine and trying to lift up the spirits of people, all of a sudden it's this and all of a sudden it's that. You gotta stop doing that. Because you're taking away from the record. You're taking away from the record. You're taking away from the man's talent. You're taking away from his hard work. Because it's obvious the man is talented because uh, he was offered $8 million. $8 million. Did you guys know that? He's offered $8 million. I'm, you know I, what he's... Hmm? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Now go ahead, then I'll get back to it. Go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead, finish, because uh, right, right. we're going to end this joint he, anyway. He was offered $8 million, and he turned it down. So to go to show you that he didn't want to be controlled by no system, he turned down the $8 million. Do you know how hard it is for somebody to turn down $8 million? He would have been an instant millionaire as soon as he signed that contract. But then he also knows, too, that he probably not going to be able to put do records like that ever again because they probably going to want something else out of him. Now, you know how certain records get you on, but when you try to continue with those same type of records, those big execs be like, nah, uh-uh, uh-uh. Yeah, this got you to the dance, bruh. But I don't think this is going to stretch out any farther. Nah, you're going you, you gonna to do this. you going to, this is what you're going to do for me. You understand what I'm saying? And he gets that. And that's why he probably turned down the deal. Now, he probably had his other reasons. He probably had other reasons. But from what I read and from what I seen, he probably turned down the deal because of that. You know? Well, but, I believe... And, I, and we going to close this drawing out. I believe that he turned down the deal because he knows that he would be considered a hypocrite. Yeah. If he did. 
And I believe that a man like him, I can just tell off of what he wrote that he stands on his morals and values. I could just, I can tell. Now, that money would have changed his life, but at what cost? You know what I'm saying? And I believe that that's what he's saying. Like, listen, your money don't mean nothing to me. I don't yeah. care if you offer me a, a, a $20 million. It means nothing to me. Because the system hasn't changed. People were still working overtime for bullshit pay. <laughs> yep. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's that is where the reason why I believe he turned it down. Now, eventually, somebody's gonna offer him enough, and they're gonna say, and whatever deal he comes with, he might say, "Listen, I need this deal to be this, and I need you to help this, and I need you to do this, and I need you to do that." He might do that. Who knows? You know what I'm saying? But he don't need to do none of that, to be honest with you, because he has the number one song in the world right now. Off of him singing in his yard. That just goes to show you that you don't need all these stupid studios and all this stuff. This man is singing in his yard and he reached across the world. Whether positive or negative, wherever you want to try to spin it, you heard the song. You heard it. And he's just singing in his yard with a with a what is a banjo? I believe that's a banjo. Don't come at me in the comments. <laughs> I'm thinking it's a banjo. We just know it's some form of guitar. It's some form that's of, all we of know. little guitar. Yeah, that's all we know. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Again, so but yeah, man, we out of here, man. Great episode. This is the reason why this guy is a legend already. You know what I'm saying? And I, I I could just see that he's he ain't worried about nothing. He probably gonna continue to do music in his yard, like for real. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And still be legendary. Mm -hmm. Amen. We out of here. Sketchpad. Peace. See ya.